city living takes its toll on birds, and the future of medicine may lie in plasma physics. This is Science Wrap. Hi and welcome to Science Wrap, the show where we feed you the tastiest new research from the world of science, all wrapped up in an easy to digest package. My name's Miriam, PhD and science lover. Now, city living can be stressful. Light, noise, air pollution, lack of healthy food, it can take its toll on you. But it turns out it can also take its toll on birds. In a study published this week in Biology Letters, a group of scientists demonstrated that the urban environment can reduce the longevity of birds. Now that's not because of factors like getting hit by a car or flying into a window. It all has to do with chromosomes. Chromosomes in animals have what are called telomeres on the end. These are the protective caps of the DNA, kind of like the plastic caps on the end of shoelaces that stop them from fraying. Over time, these caps get worn down, which means the DNA is more prone to damage and errors in replication. This, in turn, leads to cell division and biological function in the cell breaking down as well, which essentially equates to aging. Okay, but back to the birds. The team swapped birds whose parents had lived in the country with birds whose parents had lived in the city, and vice versa. Birds living in the city, even if they had country genetics, had 11% shorter telomeres than birds living in the country. The authors say that the urban environment poses some kind of stress or challenge onto the birds, and this causes their DNA to break down faster. The questions now are, can we identify which particular stresses in the urban environment cause the telomeres to break down? And, of course, do we see a similar effect in humans? Also this week, I learned about a really cool new area of medicine called plasma medicine. Plasma is a state, like solid, liquid, or gas. A plasma can be created by heating a gas to a really high temperature, or by putting it in an electromagnetic field. This changes the number of electrons and creates either positively or negatively charged ion particles. This process also changes how those particles interact with one another, or their molecular bonds. Both these things together result in a change of state, known as plasma. One of the main uses for plasma is sterilization. This is done by placing objects into a specialized machine, sucking the air out to create a vacuum, injecting some kind of substance, usually hydrogen peroxide, and then subjecting that substance to an electromagnetic field. It also creates UV light and what are called free radicals. Both the UV light and the free radicals mess with the DNA or the cell structure of the microorganism and kill them, therefore resulting in sterilization. But the really neat part about plasma in medicine is applying this technique to other things, say for example, living human tissue, particularly Plasmas could be used to treat dental issues, chronic wounds, or even athlete's foot. By eliminating fungal and bacterial infections, it helps speed up the healing process and also helps ease the suffering of the patient. All right, that's a wrap on some of the science news from this week. As always, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe, the information is down below, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.